Hello and a warm welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well and are in good spirits. Let's have a look at some of the uh, more um, esoteric aspects of the higher level equilibrium syllabus. So we've got the relationship between Gibbs free energy, relating the temperature, the universal gas constant, and Kc, the equilibrium constants. Now that's in the data booklet, you don't need to remember it, um, but you do need to be able to transpose it and make it into a more useful form. Let's not forget delta G negative means it's spontaneous, delta G positive means it's non-spontaneous, delta G zero means it's at equilibrium. If we make ln k or ln k the subject, clearly it's minus, don't forget the negative, delta G over RT, where if we follow the rules of logs keq or kc is e, which is the inverse of ln, so the power minus delta G naught over RT. This is perhaps the most useful form that we'll be using as an example to uh, demonstrate how this could be asked in an IB chemistry paper. We are now going to have a look at one of the ways, one of the most common ways, that the IB could ask you a question using delta G is minus RT ln KC. The IG love their nitrogen oxides, so I've used nitrogen with oxygen in equilibrium with nitrogen monoxide. They're all gaseous states, so this is all a homogeneous equilibria, so we're satisfying the syllabus. You don't need to be able to, to derive the equation at the top, um, that's clearly stated, but you do have to be careful with the units. It's given me delta G as 22.5 kilojoules per mole. Clearly we're using R, which is the universal gas constant, which is in joules per Kelvin per mole. So we're going to have to convert and make sure that we are consistent with the joule units in our sum. I did forget to write in 423K, so there you have it in glorious green colour instead. So if delta G is minus RT ln KC, I want to know ln KC is going to be uh, delta G over minus RT. Okay, so I'm given delta G, so I can put that into my uh, equation, just plug the numbers in. Most times for the IB, it is a question of just plugging the numbers in, being careful of the unit, units, and coming up with the result. So 22.5 kilojoules, going to times that by 1,000 to get that into joules, so it matches my gas constant, which is going to be the denominator, so that's joules to kilojoules, don't forget that step. Going to divide that by my 8.314 joules per Kelvin, and then going to times that by my temperature, which if you remember, I forgot to write in, but I put in green letters, and that was 423 Kelvin. They could ask you it to give you it, or they could give you it in centigrade, and then add 273 to make it Kelvin, but it does seem just a little bit uh, churlish to do that. So perhaps they could. Just so you can check your numbers, I've got 22500 clearly, divided by our 3516.8. I then do my, to get my KC as the subject, I need to do E to the power of that uh, fraction, which was minus 6.4. So K is E to the power of minus 6.4, just moving the ln from left to the right. And that's going to give me an answer of, I think it's 1.6 by 10 to the minus 3, which is much less than 1. So the equilibrium lies very much to the left hand side. Hope you enjoyed that. Smash that subscribe button. Have a great day out there, kids. Keep doing your IV chemistry. Well done.